Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is the part two follow-up to the Rim Rock Lake Thunder Egg video. Um, if you haven't watched that one first, uh, I'll put a link right up there and then down in the description box. Please go check out that video so that you can have a little bit more context on what we're doing here today. This is on the table, uh, all of the material that we brought back from Rim Rock Lake. And uh, in today's video, we are going to be doing some testing, some cutting, and uh, well, generally we're gonna determine what this material exactly is. So uh, there's a, a large variety that we picked up from either side of the little aisle inlet where the, where the river meets the lake and um, on the bank, I guess you'd call it the bank, the bank of the actual river the material varied widely. Um, so I understand the confusion that people might have out there about, about this. Um, there will also be a members only video on, and we're kind of showing some of the research, uh, behind, behind the, the, these videos. So, um, if you, uh, like that, you know, hit the, hit the member button down, down below the join button. But, uh, with that said, uh, let's, uh, kind of move in here and look at this material. So we have this big variety of stuff here, right? Different things, stuff that's very uh, crystally quartz, what on the surface at least appears to be chert in a lot of the thunder eggs. I have no clue what's happening with this guy right here. There's a number of these. Um, so I've already kind of started some of the testing. You can see that big thunder egg there. It's always nice if you have a Geiger counter to uh, check your stuff, um, you know, this uh, is not much higher than my background radiation here. You know, we uh, hover between, you know, 15 and like 30 uh, CPM. It just kind of depends, you know, so not radioactive, um, at least not to any real measurable amount. Uh, while we have everything out here, the next step is going to be to shut the lights off some, uh, and then we will be using the black light. So my light of choice is the UV Beast 365 nanometer filtered <laughs> filtered light. And, uh, you know, it's pretty good. Let's uh, see what we can see, if anything. Uh, right now, the only light in here is from my window. So if we have anything popping like this, that pops. Versus, you know, something that doesn't, it should stand out. And I will separate these out. You can see a little something in there. That could just be... Uh, some kind of lichen, something on the surface. Definitely in there. Look at that. Also that, and then separate this out. Yeah, you can really see that. Now, if you, uh, haven't watched any of my other videos on ultraviolet light, phosphorescence, fluorescent rocks and minerals. I'll put those up in the corner and down below as well. So now my next step is I'm going to sort all of this material and try to pick up, pick out some uh, specimens that represent the spot that we can then thoroughly go through and test. So this is a much more manageable pile, for sure. Uh, let's start by looking at this. What we have here is rhyolite with some kind of quartz crystal druzy pocket going on. I'm kind of interested in this uh, brown mineral. Um, it's very flaky. Uh, it just kind of you know, you can kind of just pop it off, right? And you can expose more of this druzy quartz crystal. 
Um, and we kind of go into a, some slight uh, chalcedony in here, which that's common. I mean, you can imagine this being a like a lined vug. Um, let's see what here on the table, including that, is possibly magnetic. So I have a rare earth neodymium magnet glued on a string. And uh, pretty much the way you do, do this is you just kind of go through and check to see if there's any kind of pull on anything whatsoever. It doesn't really appear to be any pull on any of these. Um, they shouldn't really be magnetic at all. Um, this one, that, that kind of is over there. So here um, we have that rock that I think has uh, epidote in it. Um, you can kind of see maybe, let's see if we can line this up here. So we've got our string and you uh, hang it and you bring your rock in and you can detect that slight magnetism. So uh, that's one, one good test. You know, if you haven't seen the practical guide to uh, <clears throat> rock and uh, mineral identification, you should go watch that. Um, this is a piece of what I believe to be chert, um, which this I left this little sample out specifically because we're going to be testing the hardness of this. And then, of course, we have some samples here that are very clearly quartz crystal, agate, chalcedony, kind of ranging in, in uh, well, between those, um, which that's common. You know, you'll have that bug. This does have the appearance of being a thunder egg from there. So um, clearly you can have a quartz lined thunder egg. I mean, you can see the outside of this, right? Like that's very round and very thunder egg ish. Um, interesting to see that there. This came off of the beach. So this right here, I'm wondering if I can uh, possibly dissolve that. You know, we have these here. So I think the next step is uh, maybe this one, since it's kind of on the flatter side. We're going to mix up some iron out and uh, throw that in there and see if we can get this to dissolve at all. I got to kind of do this outside. Got a pail with a little bit of water. We're going to be using some iron out. There's sample and uh you know it's it's a pretty safe uh chemical to use uh, i still like to do it outside you know i mean it's pretty safe though so uh we'll just dump some of this in here kind of give it a stir get it dissolved There we go. I might add a little bit extra water to get that thing really covered. So we have that stuff soaking in the iron out. Let's try to do some testing on this. I'm gonna be using the hardness pick set. I'm gonna be putting links down below to all of this stuff. So uh, this is a really great little kit here. Um, it is kind of a more pricey item but it comes with your picks, some streak plates, a little magnet, which the little magnet kind of kind of sucks, but whatever. And then it does have some uh, information here on the little sheet of some various hardnesses, how to, how to kind of use the kit and stuff. Pretty good. Um, so uh, let's see, is chert even on my list here? It is is not. So that's not a problem. Um, we do have our Rocks and Minerals book, the Smithsonian one, and we can look up chert in this book. Um, you know, we're kind of uh, jumping around a little bit, but that's okay. Um, so we have chert here. Um, you can pause it and read it if you like. There is a little bit of a, a pretty nice little cheat sheet in the front of this book, which I find to be useful. Um, you know, we can see the mineral, uh, you know, the cleavage, the fracture, all of those those good things. Um, go through and take our hardness. You can actually just look this up by the hardness levels, which that can really help to determine and uh, kind of 
narrow down what you have. You know, um, that's one of the problems that we always have, or a lot of people always have, is where do you even start with this? Hardness is a great place to start. So the way you do this, um, you know, you can start all the way down here at like a two and work your way up to an eight. That's kind of not practical. <laughs> We're going to start with a five. And uh, the way you do this is you're going to need a clean kind of flat surface here. Um, we have this little chip and we're going to come in here at about a 45 degree angle and try to scratch it. Now, uh, you're probably not going to be able to see my scratch on there or my attempt. It's right. Come on. It's right there. So uh, the way I like to do this is then come in on the side and try to feel for it. So a five left nothing. I try to drag my fingernail into it and see if it's not just a mark, but if the pick actually carved material away. So just did the six. Nothing. So I did the eight and it did scratch it. So we are between a seven and an eight. Now that doesn't mean that it's 7.5. That doesn't mean anything other than it's between a seven and an eight. It could be a 7.05 and you'll still make that scratch. So um, it's hard. It's uh, we are in the realm of silicates you know you're um we gotta remember what shirt is if you don't um you, we can reference our book here all right so we can give this thing a look here it's certainly a fine grain you know you can't there's no visible grain to be seen um it's very crystalline so that doesn't mean crystal that means that we can't really uh see the, the 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 structure of the grain um i mean we we match all of these all of these things okay so hardness visual inspection i'm leaning towards chert as far as what is filling these thunder eggs there which is still very cool um you know it doesn't always have to be an agate to be neat. Um, one fun test that you can do with something like this is throw sparks off of it. Rocks that have a hardness of like six and higher, if you have something like this right here, which this is made out of an old file, uh, the rock is going to be harder than this. So we can shave metal off of the file and create a spark. So let's let's give this a shot here. I turned down the lights so you could see. Check that out. I'm doing this behind the camera, so <laughs> you get it. You 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 get the drift there. So pretty cool. You know, it's a fun little experiment, especially if you have kids. Um, I mean, obviously, we, we don't have kids, but, uh, you know, it's a fun thing to to have out there and show kids, I guess, so that you could, uh, well, you could take a piece of metal and a rock and make a fire. Anyways, um, so, yeah, chert. Chert is inside these things. Um, you know, we have that agate that's still soaking. We'll check in on that later. Um, we're going to be doing some cutting here. We have some of these, uh, well, there you go. I'd like to cut the ends off of this on the high-tech saw.
so uh, unfortunately, I was not able to clamp any of my Thunder Eggs here in the vise in my big oil saw. They're just kind of this odd shape, and they uh, keep wanting to slip out. I really need a, a Thunder Egg holder, uh, a, a proper Thunder Egg clamp for it. Um, you saw that I cut this agate, and uh, well, the one side I polished up, and it is... Pretty, very pretty. You got some pitting in it, but you can really see that um, how it formed in the seam where you have, let's see, let's go like that. Yeah, you can really see how it formed in the seam. You have that chalcedony on the outside and quartz crystal completing the opening. Uh, this side I just cut and left rough so that we can set it on the shelf just like that. And you can kind of see that polished face. I think it'll look nice. So, uh, summarize it. Um, agate, quartz crystal, chert. That's what you can find there. Um, no opal. I think people maybe had the chert and opal confused. Um, this stuff, this kind of black brown stuff, uh, not sure what it is. You know, um, I tried to dissolve dissolve it with some iron out. Um, probably not strong enough of an acid or not the correct acid. Um, you know, I can maybe uh, throw this in some like sulfuric, uh, muriatic. Uh, I have a lot of different acids, but it's a whole thing, right, to, to do. <laughs> so uh, that might be a, a project for another day, not today. Um, and then uh, this this big guy, the big thunder egg, uh, that will have to go to the rock rollers club. And then, you know, the other ones, I think, um, well, I will have to save it for another day, a face cut. I, I'm just not set up, f set up for it. If, uh, maybe I have to find somebody or take it to the club and face cut that and see, see what's really going on in there. So, uh, I hope you found this to be useful and, uh, you know, informative and you maybe came away well, you know, learn, learning some stuff about the material coming from up there. Uh, definitely a place to go check out. Probably not when the weather is terrible, though. So uh, thanks for coming by, everyone. Thank you so much for watching my entire video. If you like the content that I'm producing here on this channel and you want to support the content even further, you can do so by becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below. The membership comes with a growing library of exclusive videos and just great other extra content. So uh, just follow the links down below and I will see you on the next video.